I've been on a mission to make as many robots as I can. I've made a hexapedal robot, a ukulele playing robot, and even this thing. But it feels like they're all missing something. So I think it's time to try something new. This time, I'm gonna make something you can actually interact with, or even better, play a game against. So through the use of real-time computer vision, a bit of vector maths, and the simplest possible electronic setup, let's design and build an air hockey playing robot. Before I can even start, I need to come up with a design for how this robot's gonna work. To move around the arena, I need a system that's capable of moving in 2D. And there are many different ways of doing this, but they all generally require the use of motors to move a carriage around, and that carriage will then be used to hit the puck. The first system I came across is a Cartesian one, where each axis is controlled by an independent motor, allowing the carriage to move linearly in the X and Y directions. But the drawback here is that one axis must carry the entire weight of the other, which could limit the robot's speed since I'm using relatively heavy stepper motors. So instead, I've decided to use something called a HBOT system, as it allows for the motors to be fixed in place, sidestepping the problem entirely. And it achieves this through the use of one continuous H-shaped belt. But if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering how exactly that's possible. Well, the short answer is that the movement of both motors pulling on the same belt combines to determine the position of the carriage, and their direction relative to each other determines whether it moves left, right, up or down. But to really understand how this works will require a quick demonstration. Let the card on the left represent the left motor and the card on the right represent the right motor. This point here where they meet shows where the position of the robot's carriage would be. The rules are I can only move each card left or right, and I have to keep them at the same angle. Now if I turn one motor by itself, the carriage moves diagonally. And as you would expect, turning the other motor also moves the carriage diagonally, this time in the other direction. Now watch what happens when I turn both motors in opposite directions. The carriages move vertically. And when both motors are turned in the same direction, we get horizontal movement. So through a combination of both motors, you can control where the carriage ends up. But for an air hockey robot, movement alone isn't enough. It also needs to know where to move to effectively intercept or hit the puck. And that requires a vision system. So I've decided to use a Raspberry Pi camera module, which of course will be hooked up to a Pi. This setup should be able to accurately detect small objects, like the puck, and at a reasonable speed. And since the Pi can't control the stepper motors directly, I'll be using an Arduino. Links will be in the description for all the parts used. Let's design and build this. So, it turns out that I didn't leave enough clearance for some of the fasteners, which made tightening them a massive pain. But, after some trial and error, I managed to finish these pieces which are supposed to connect the Y axis to the X axis. And they're designed to hold a set of pulleys to change the direction of the belt. As for the rest of the Y axis assembly, there's the carriage itself, which will move up and down along some linear rods. Now for the x-axis, I made some simple mounts for the stepper motors, everything's connected via M3 screws by the way, and these clip pieces should hopefully guide the belt on the outside. Once we add in the table, the y-axis goes on top like so, and after putting the steppers into their mounts and attaching them to the sides of the table, some additional linear rods can be put in place. So now I can move the carriage in all directions. It's a bit stiff, so I had to do some tweaking to get everything lined up properly. 
The next step is to have the robot actually move. And that requires a bunch of electronics. This is because the stepper motors can't be connected directly to the Arduino. Instead, they require the use of some driver modules that control the amount of current that flows through the windings. So I've got each stepper wired to a driver using these connections. And the drivers are wired to the Arduino through some digital pins and of course power and ground. While the Arduino is connected to the Pi through USB. And once the electronics were finished, I then finally added the belt. Now all I had to do was upload some code to test the entire system. And while I got everything to work at slow speeds, I ran into a small problem of the belt slipping. Which completely stops the carriage from moving. So the only thing I could think of to fix this was to add some code to make the stepper motor slowly accelerate up to speed. Which hopefully should work. I also spent some time working on the puck detection and while I had trouble with it trying to detect my hand at first, I eventually got it to a semi-working state. Surprisingly enough, with those two changes, I was able to get the robot to start tracking the puck. And after a few tweaks, I got the detection to be much more reliable and the response time to be better. Right now, you can see I have the robot trying to match the X coordinate of the puck. But as soon as I turn the air on, I realise that it's just not fast enough to keep up with the speed of any normal shot. And I think it's down to the fact that the stepper motors are slightly underpowered for this application. And since I don't have the budget to buy any more, I'll have to come up with a different way of solving this problem. Right now, I have the robot detect the location of the puck from a video feed, calculate its current X position, and then send commands to the motor to move to that X position. In theory, this should be great for defending, since it means that whenever the opponent hits the puck forward, the robot should be in the optimal position to intercept. But in practice, this relies on the system being fast enough to get there in time. And as we've seen, that's not always going to happen. It also doesn't account for rebound shots, which are when the opponent hits the puck against the wall. So here's my solution. Detect not only the puck, but the paddle as well. Draw a line through them, and then propagate that line to predict the location of the puck. This means that the robot will be able to position itself for an incoming shot beforehand, making things way easier on the movement side. And much to my surprise, this method works really well. So well, in fact, that it can actually be legitimately difficult to score against the robot. I then decided to move on to having the robot learn to attack. So the first thing I did was add an extension to the carriage to stop shots from sliding underneath. And then some code to make the robot push back the puck. But something about these changes resulted in the robot basically trying to tear itself apart. So I used tape as a quick fix to stop the movement, which at the very least got things working for a short while. But I was still having problems, so I redesigned some of the mounting pieces, which allowed me to get this rally going. Now I wanted to make the robot be able to attack, but I ended up realising that it's going to take a lot more work to get the robot to that stage. So I think I'll stop here. I guess any more advanced features will have to wait until version 2.